In January of 2017, it became clear that Sean's 280Z would need a new engine, and therefore we would need somewhere to work on it. After a bit of research, we decided on this Harbor Freight half-ton engine stand that cost us about 40 bucks at the time. It was a bit rough around the edges, and the inline six caused it to droop a bit, but overall it worked out just fine and stood up to our beatings. After that, it was very helpful for setting up the small block Chevy before it went into the blazer, but it was clear that the stand had a few shortcomings. Which is when we started to modify it. First, we welded much of the frame that had previously only been bolted together, and added this kind of ladder frame support because the main mast of the stand did have a tendency to droop forward when the full weight of an engine was bearing down on it. When it became obvious that that crusty engine we put in the blazer needed to be rebuilt, the engine stand was back in use and did a fine job. But it still drooped an uncomfortable amount when a fully dressed engine was hung off of it. It was also becoming obvious that a tray underneath to catch oil, coolant, and dirt falling off of engines would be a huge asset. Harbor Freight didn't offer a product for this purpose, but Jegs did, and I figured the engine stands would be close enough that this tray would fit. And it would if this little ladder bar support wasn't in the way. So I decided it was time for version 3 of the engine stand and unbolted that brace. Without it, that tray fit very nicely, and I wanted to make sure that no future changes would get in the way of that. The main point of flux in the stand is the attachment between the front and rear sections. The frame is just box tubing with a loose slip fit that gets held in from underneath with a bolt. Not only is it not the most secure thing in the world, but that bolt pushing up means that it camps the back of the stand forward, which is part of why it seems to droop so much. I decided that it was more important to me for the stand to be sturdy than for it to disassemble, so we'll be adding on some steel to reinforce it. These are some scraps from old bed frames, which are not the easiest material to work with, but they should be good enough for this. With the old securing rivets removed, we can grind off all of the paint and cut them to length. Then, one rail will get trimmed all the way along its length to make it just the right width so that it mates up with the other piece of rail on top of that main section of box tubing. These pieces were cut to be a very specific fit so that when the two halves of the frame are put back together, they are now very snug. We'll stitch all along the edges and fill in the gaps between the bed rails up top to glue all the pieces together. It would have been nice to do more finishing work here, but since the drip tray will be in place pretty much any time the engine stand is in use, it's not like it's going to be visible anyway. To coat that, we've got this red brake caliper paint that is a pretty decent match for the factory color. And after giving that some time to dry, yeah, it's pretty ugly, but it should be very strong. We even added this extra piece of bracing to the main mast. And only about 18 hours after that, it was asked to hold up the 454 that was eventually destined for my 78 Firebird. And yes, it wasn't fully assembled, and it did droop a little bit, but at least the front of the engine wasn't pointing downwards like every other large, heavy engine on this stand had been before. As you can see, the drip tray fits under there nicely, and overall I was quite happy with how version 3 of the engine stand was working out but I just can't seem to leave well enough alone. One of the things that drives me crazy is the engine stand always trying to roll away while using it. This made things like hammering in core plugs, torquing bolts, and even just trying to flip the engine over much more awkward than they needed to be. So something very much on the wish list for engine stand version 4 was adding brakes, which is what we're going to be doing with this bolt and nut. The idea is to weld these to the frame at an angle so that when a bolt is installed and tightened down, it will lock the wheel in place. This was the simplest solution I could come up with, and I think it's one that should work quite well. But that's not the only problem we've had with the stand. Sometimes it's been tough to get it close enough to the crane because the front legs are a bit too wide. 
Front casters are off. I bolted on these washers as kind of a guide. And we're gonna cut this corner and as much off on this edge as we can. We don't want to move the wheels because that's what gives the stand stability, but we can trim down the outside of the frame just a little bit. We will cut the literal corners and round everything over, which will probably let us move the stand about an inch farther towards the hoist, which in some cases would be just enough. Following that, I decided to close off the main section of box tubing making up the frame, mostly for aesthetic reasons, but also it could help keep water and spiders out of there. We'll do something similar with these triangular pieces we'll be adding to the mast support. Capping that area off makes the whole thing look much cleaner. Next is another long time wishlist item, and that is a place to store the handle. This will be a piece of half inch square tubing and this tab welded to the base of the stand. We'll have to take a better look at that when it all goes back together, but for right now, we're going to work on making a nicer pin that locks the head of the stand in place. I don't actually remember what kind of a pin it came with out of the box, but I didn't trust it, and we've just been using a grade 8 bolt all these years. But that can sometimes be a bit awkward, so I figured we would make one that's a little bit nicer. We'll still be using a grade 8 half inch bolt, but this one is a bit longer and we are going to machine off the threads. This should make it easier to get the locking pin into place, and the bolt is long enough that it will pass through both sides of the head. We'll also be making the head of the bolt round, and welding a washer on top of it to make it nice and easy to hold. In order for the pin to lock the head on both sides, we'll have to drill through the lower portion of the tube on top of the stand, which was a decision with some problems that we'll talk about later. This pin should be a step up from a plain bolt, but the head of the stand is still going to have a bit of wiggle to it. My plan was to add on two bolts to help lock it in place, very much like we did for the rear wheels. Unfortunately, I didn't give a whole lot of thought to this and jumped right into drilling the top of the stand without realizing that tightening them down would be trying to lift the whole way to the engine. For round two, I decided to add a piece of 8th inch strap steel all the way around the top, which we'll do by welding one end in place and pulling it around that round tube, hammering it down as we go. A few tack welds will keep the fit tight, and pretty soon we have it wrapped all the way around, ready to be trimmed, and then fully welded. Then it's time for more drilling, this time for a pair of bolts that will come up from below. We'll fully weld the nut onto each side, and that should let us lock the head of the stand in place very tightly. We'll follow that up with a bunch of cleanup work, and then a coat of paint. I didn't have any more of that brake caliper spray paint, so we're just using some general use enamel. After giving that a fair amount of time to dry, we will reinstall the wheels with a fresh coat of grease, and with that we're pretty much done with the stand itself. But that doesn't mean we're done quite yet, because there's still the matter of the stand's head, which could do with a few improvements. For starters, it's always been a bit awkward to have to balance two wrenches as well as the head itself when trying to install it onto the back of an engine. It's hardly an insurmountable obstacle, but I do think it could be a bit easier. All we're going to do is install bolts to the standoff arms, tighten them down just enough to hold them in place, and weld down the heads. We'll do this in a few steps, being careful to not overheat the bolts. Once they've all been welded in place, we'll cut the last few threads off so that the bolts fit the stand perfectly, and then give each of those arms a fresh coat of paint. While those are drying, we'll address another long-term problem with this stand, and that's that the turning handle has always been a bit on the short side. The one it comes with is a joke, and I would go as far as to say it is in fact dangerous. For a while, we extended that handle with a piece of half-inch square tubing, but it wasn't quite ideal. After that, we ended up using this grounding rod, which is a bit longer and totally solid, but still pretty awkward. So while we're changing everything else up, I would really like to take care of this once and for all. 
Okay, that might be a little bit unwieldy, so we will cut it down to a more reasonable length. We'll also make a series of quarter-inch holes through that Schedule 40 pipe, and drill a matching hole in the engine stand's head. To act as a locking pin between those two parts, we'll weld a flange nut to the head of a quarter-inch bolt. We'll be able to show off how that works in just a minute, and for the final demo we will reassemble the head atop the stand. And here is the completed product, completed as much as anything ever is. Starting at the front, I added these two additional mounting points. I don't have anything for them right now. I kind of want a front support that uh, hooks up to somewhere on the front of the engine, like a turnbuckle kind of situation, like a plate that bolts here. Uh, obviously the corners are much more radiused. You can see it's as far as you could go. This is significantly braced in the corner here. We've got a solid triangle and added these. This is actually one of the biggest features I wanted for this thing. You literally just tighten down the bolt and it hits the wheel. If you over tighten this, maybe you'll break that weld, bend the whole thing up a little bit, break the wheel. I don't know, nothing good. So you do have to be careful about how tight you get that, but it's pretty effective. This thing is uh, pretty solid. Back here, we've added a post. This is another thing that I really wanted for the stand, and that's a place to store the handle, which we also made. This is the stock one. It is pitifully short. It doesn't even come out to the ends of these grips. Drops right down. This paint on there is still a little bit thick. Uh, up here, there's a lot going on. I haven't painted the head on this. I'm not really worried about it. We've got holes drilled, so you can drop in the pin and lock the handle in place. And that's especially important with these other sets of holes, which are for sliding it all the way out here and locking it there so that we can tilt the engine with a lot more leverage and also not have this sliding all over the place. When you do flip it over, yes, the pin is facing upside down. If you really want, you can put a nut on the other side. Up top here, we've got a custom pin. This is now drilled all the way through the head into the stand. So we can use a long bolt that prevents it from rotating up top and also down low. The holes drilled in the perimeter of the head aren't really the straightest things in the world. And the only way to get this to line up in every one of them was to neck it down a bit, but that's fine. That's what these Frankenstein neck bolts are for. We put these short bolts in here and tighten them down and that locks the head very firmly in place. It's good for turning bolts and stuff because there's less movement of everything, but it's really handy for camera work because we don't have the whole thing tilting all over the place. Also, I've seen these head tubes split open at the seam where they were originally welded, and this strap over the top should make that pretty impossible. We did weld in these bolts to really just make it easier to tighten things down. Now you don't have to hold them on one side with a wrench, and you can just tighten them from the back here. And as a bonus, all you need to adjust every feature on this thing is a three quarter of an inch wrench. This was, I think a while ago now, but when I first got this, none of these were flat. So I did carefully sand each one of these flat, as flat as I could get these tubes. And it's pretty good now. They sit nice and flush up against an engine. Here's a set of those arms off of a different engine stand where they were far, far worse to the point where I didn't feel comfortable using them even if I sanded them flat at the ends. To repair these, I completely cut off all of those spacer tubes, cut and sanded them to the point where both ends were square, and then used a bolt to hold them in place while they were welded back on. Luckily, the ones on the Harbor Freight engine stand weren't quite so bad and required a lot less effort to repair. There are probably some minor things that I'm forgetting to talk about, but overall, I'm pretty happy with this, even though it's uh, been a bit of a journey getting here. I definitely could have painted it better. You can see a lot of texture and brush strokes in it, but it just gets beat up and painted on and greasy anyway. And other than the front brace, really the only two things I could think of to improve this would be a geared head so that you kind of turn a crank and turn it around. So it was really nice probably beyond the scope of what's ever gonna happen to this stand. And uh, the final thing would be some kind of legs that extend out of here. This has to be narrow in the front so that it can uh, come up against the hoist. But if we had like a bar that slid out with another set of wheels or even rubber pads that you tighten down into the floor, that would be pretty cool for making the whole thing extra stable. I'm probably never gonna actually make that, but it is a thought I have had. 
Since filming the previous section, I have actually gone through and done an entire engine rebuild with this upgraded stand, and I've got some thoughts. The locking bolts for the head are fantastic, and I really appreciated having them. The locks on the wheels do a great job of keeping them from turning, but the whole stand can still slide sideways when you're torquing down heavy stuff, so you do still have to sometimes lean into it. The handle is maybe a little bit long for rolling this thing around in tight spaces, but for everything else it is great. Welding the bolts into the arms is a bit of a mixed bag because on the one hand it does help in certain situations to attach the head, but on the other if the engine is up in the air you still need two wrenches anyway so you can kind of counterbalance the force you're putting into it. The biggest change we made to the stand that I actually don't like is the double locking head pin. I severely underestimated the amount of water that would work its way into the upright of the stand while an engine block was being washed. We ended up drilling a drain hole, and drain it did, there was quite a bit of water sitting in there, so we will douse it thoroughly with WD-40 to try to prevent it from becoming a problem. Two months later we checked it out with the borescope and there didn't seem to be much rust in there, just a lot of filings from drilling, but it is something we will have to keep an eye on. Doing all of this over again, I would much rather have left that sealed. But with that note made, overall the engine stand worked great for this rebuild and I was very happy with the rest of our upgrades. In the six and a half years since buying this stand, we have used it a whole bunch and based on that experience, made a lot of changes. And yeah, sometimes you can just buy a better tool, but sometimes you're looking for pretty specific features and the best option is to make it happen on your own. And of course, it is pretty satisfying to use something customized just for you.